So uh, L'Hopital was a French, I don't know what he was, uh, but he, he claimed to be a mathematician, but they found out later he was just buying theorems <laughs> from people and putting his name on it. So, uh, uh, but but this is a, a pretty powerful um, uh, um, a little trick that will we'll show up in some of the new problems we're doing today. By the way, we're doing improper integrals. So we're doing integration when uh, there, the function is unbounded or uh, uh, the integral goes to infinity. So there's some kind of infinity involved, whether it's in the vertical direction or the horizontal direction, right? So, um, so we need to go back to limits, right? So basically, this, this is a trick for limits. So um, it says that uh, if f of c equals g of c equals 0, then the limit as x goes to c of f of x over g of x. So since I get a 0 over 0 here, this is called an indeterminate form, uh, I, I can apply L'Hopital's rule which is, tells me that I can do the limit over using the derivatives. So not a quotient rule, right? Derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator and then reevaluate the limit. So uh, this is L'Hopital's rule in general. This is the version we usually teach in Calc 1. And there's a couple of indeterminate forms we do in Calc 1. And then there's a couple of new ones that we, we'll, we'll see in Calc 2. Okay. So, um, so let's do a quick problem with this, right? So, for example, the limit of as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. Anybody remember this? This limit, this was a, a squeeze theorem limit for us in Calc 1 in my class, right? So this limit is 1, but when I plug in 0, I get sine of 0, which is 0, and I plug in 0 downstairs, I get 0. So I get 0 over 0. So this is a case where L'Hopital's rule can be applied, right? So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, all right, I'm doing the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x, that derivative over the derivative of x. So I just want to, I'm just trying to say to you, the reader, that I'm about to apply L'Hopital's rule, right? And I like to put a little hop in there or a little L over the equal sign as I apply L'Hopital's rule. And then what do I get? Derivative of sine is what? Cosine. And then derivative of x is 1. And now I can evaluate my limit, so I get cos of 0 over 1, which is 1. And then, of course, you say, well, why didn't you teach me this in Calc 1? Well, I did teach it in Calc 1, but you still had to do all those limit processes to get a derivative and then you could do L'Hopital's rule, right? So, so um, this this looking familiar to everyone? Anybody going? I've never seen this before in my life. Anybody saying that? And it's okay. I just need to know so that I can. Anybody hear me? You can hear me. Okay. So, so there's several indeterminate forms that we're, we, we should have dealt with in Calc 1. And so let me, let me write those out here. I can go to the next page here. So my uh, indeterminate forms I'm looking for are 0 over 0. Uh, infinity over infinity. Um, by the way, that infinity over infinity is the same as zero over zero, right? And, and I'll try and explain that. 
uh, any kind of plus or minus a zero times infinity. Um, those are really the main indeterminate forms from, from Calc 1. But all of them are treated like zero. Go ahead, David. What about negative infinity over infinity or vice versa? Yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't care about uh, the signs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter. Those, those signs won't matter. The, the key is to see them all as zero over zero. It's, it's kind of, kind of difficult. Uh, but let me see if I can, uh, I can. So, so this one we just saw, right? We saw that one. That was our sine of x over x we saw, right? Uh, this one, uh, I'll say, um, uh, and it's dumb, but let me do it anyway. <laughs> x over x. <laughs> As, as the limit as x goes to infinity. Now this is dumb because, but clearly you can see the upstairs goes to infinity and the downstairs goes to infinity, right? But what I do is I'll take the upstairs function and move it downstairs. So this is the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x divided by 1 over x. I, I, so all I did was take this function in the numerator and move it to the denominator and it becomes uh, the reciprocal, right? Really ridiculous in this case to, to do that, but it's the same idea here. So infinity over infinity can be seen as zero over zero, right? It's the same thing, just by me moving the function. Zero times infinity, same thing. I'll move, if I move the zero function downstairs, right? Uh, if I move the zero function downstairs, I get the infinity over infinity. If I move the infinity infinite function downstairs, I, I get the zero over zero, right? So, for example, uh, um, the limit of, as x goes to infinity of e to the negative x times x. So where is x going as x goes to infinity? Duh. Infinity, right? Where does e to the negative x go? Right? Where does e to the negative x go goes to zero? Right? So this is a zero times infinity case. And then, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll move that zero downstairs, right? The limit as x goes to zero of x over e to the x. And now I've got my infinity over infinity. And now I'm ready for L'Hopital's rule. Let's do that one. The limit as x goes to zero, sorry, x goes, that should be x goes to infinity, sorry, of e to the minus x times x. Well, I, I got to turn this into the zero over zero or the infinity over infinity. So I do that by moving one of my functions. You won't always know which function to move. So you, you move one of them and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, you move the other. It's that simple. Trial and error. Um, and so, so now I'm ready for a little hop right here, right? I'm doing the limit as x goes to infinity. Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then where does this particular function go? It goes to 0. And where does this limit go? So it's 1, one over infinity is a 0 now. Don't you have to do all of those, right? If you do a couple of early ones, a couple of middle ones, a couple of late ones, you should be fine. Let's look at the other indeterminate forms that we have. Uh, so these are the powers. So these are products, quotients and products, right? Um, dividing, 0 divided by 0, infinity divided by infinity, or 0 times inf infinity. Those are my products. Uh, there are differences, so there's an infinity minus infinity. Recording accidentally. Um, uh, 
some more forms. There's infinity minus infinity. And on that one, we do an LCD. Um, uh, there's 1 to the infinity. There's 0 to the 0. And infinity to the 0. So these are these are the more of the forms that you would see um, and we'll see we'll see a couple of them we'll see these really mostly in the in the calc 2 class so I want to do a couple of problems with those on, on, on how to deal with it um, So, but these, these things are going to happen inside of our, our intervals. Okay, so we just have to look for them. You have to look for them. You have to look for one of these indeterminate forms. Hopefully it'll be one of the easier ones. It could be one of these, these last three. Um, so, like, this is number 43. So I've got the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the 1 over x. So you can see this is the, uh, so as x goes to infinity, x gets very large, right? So, and as 1 over x, as x goes to infinity, that goes to 0. So it's this form right here, right? Everybody with me? Now, the proof of L'Hopital's is, is quite beautiful and simple. It's in the book. Uh, so, so uh, um, I, would, I would ask uh, Adrian and, and Charlie to, to look at those. Charlie, you saw me prove it last semester. So, but it's still, it's still good to look at it again. Adrian, look at that proof. Okay, it's in the book. Everyone else doesn't have to. <laughs> I can sense the smiles. Even when the cameras are off, I can feel the joy of, you don't have to show me the proof. I love it. So this particular case, uh, in my domain that I'm talking about is x gets very large. Both of these, the base of this function and the exponent of this function are uh, continuous. And so we had learned in Calc 1 that the, 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 the limit of a composition of functions, right, is uh, I can move that limit into the composition, right? I can move this particular limit into the, the composition. So, but what I'm going to do first is do this one little trick, right? Um, I, I'm going to say that uh, uh, that x is e to the ln of x. So, so it's always going to be the base is e to the ln of the base. It's all about the base of the base. So I'm going to do this trick every time when I see one of these three forms. Okay. The 1 to infinity, the 0 to the 0, the infinity to the 0. So, so looking at our limit now, we have the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the ln of x to the 1 over x. So first of all, do we agree with the box? We agree with the box? We agree with that box there, that black box, right? Because the e and the ln are inverse functions, right? So, so obviously, now my limit is the same still, right? Because the e and the ln just cancel each other again. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the use the properties of logs here, right? I'm using the properties of logs to say that 1 over x comes out as a multiplier. So I get the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the 1 over x times the ln of x. Right? 
properties of, of logs say if you have an exponent of your argument, that can come out as a coefficient to the LN. And so this is uh, uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the ln of x over x. Right? That's my exponent, right? I'm trying to really emphasize that that's my exponent, ln of x over x. And now if I'm trying to take this, so, so because I've got continuous functions, I can move this limit inside, right? This is e raised to the limit as x goes to infinity of ln of x over x. And where does ln of x go? Oh, infinity. Where does x go? Infinity. So I've got infinity over infinity. So I can do L'Hopital's rule. Right? A little L over my equal sign. I've got e raised to the limit as x goes to infinity. Derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Derivative of x is 1. Sorry, how are you raising e to the limit? Yeah, uh, uh, because in, in Calc 1 we had to talk about when you have a composition of functions, you can move your limit inside the composition. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you think about it, it makes sense. Uh, a composition of functions, uh, I'm just finding the height of the outside function at the height of the inside function. And that's all a limit is, is the height, right? So I'm just taking, finding the height of the inside of the composition function first and then seeing where I end up at the height of the outside function, the e. So this is e raised to the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x. And what is that limit? Well, 1 over x as x goes to infinity is 0. So e to the 0 and then I get 1. So if I don't have a 0 over 0, I make it happen. And I make it happen by moving functions or by using this e to the ln trick, right? So, so um, so that is our process, and they're all going to be similar to that. The only one that's kind of weird is that infinity minus infinity, but you would see it, you, you would get an LCD, and it turns into 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Um, so you're going to see these inside of our limits that we're doing today, uh, inside of our integrals, uh, which will turn into limits. And it's not inside of everyone, right? But I'll make sure it happens a couple of times. And I'll say, uh, show the following integral on the test. I would say, show the following integral converges or diverges, meaning get, I get a number or I don't get a number. And uh, um, using a limit and L'Hopital's. I'll say it just like that, right? So you know you're looking for it. Cool, let's take a little break. Let's, let's do... Uh, uh, let's come back at 9.05, okay? So uh, we're talking about five, section 5.10 today, improper integrals. And again, I'm doing this just because it kind of, it goes with the flow of all of our different processes. You'll see a lot of by parts in this section. You'll see a lot of tic-tac-toe. Uh, you won't necessarily see uh, partial fractions or, you know, but they're easy anyway. Um, so, um, so, improper integrals. So basically, if I have, so what we're going to be doing is taking a, an 
an integral or finding an area, if it exists, okay, where there's going to be some version of of uh, infinity involved, okay. So, so for example, uh, we'll just look at a couple of them. Uh, so, like ln of x, right? So, for example, if I wanted to find the, figure out if this area is is finite, right? And so, so think about this one, right? What are my bounds here? This is the integral of, of minus infinity to zero. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, zero to one, right? X-axis, Robert, of ln of x dx. And so this is a perfect example of an improper integral where one of the bounds of my integral exists at a vertical asymptote for the function. It, and it could be both. Okay. It could be both. Um, I tend to, to stick to one side uh, uh, so, uh, so we're looking for, so it's going to help us to graph these functions, right? So, so if I ask you to do this integral and you can't recognize that it's improper, you can graph it and then see if you have a, a vertical, uh, asymptote, right? At one of the endpoints or both of the endpoints. Uh, and then you're going to turn this into a, a limit, right? So this, this thing is going to turn into a limit as uh, a goes to zero, right? That's the issue when I'm going to zero of the integral from a to one of the ln of x dx. Now, that area may exist. It may be countable, right? Does that make sense? It might have an area, let's, let's say, of 10, right? 10 units squared. Who cares about the units? Your science teachers will take care of the units for you. I don't care. I just want you to be able to do the integral. So, uh, so if that area is finite, we call it convergent, right? If the area cannot be calculated, like I get a limit of does not exist or infinite, right? Then we say, divergent right so if the area is finite uh, the integral uh, is convergent uh, if the area is infinite Uh, then the integral is divergent. And I think Webstein will, will ask you, is it convergent? If so, give me the number. Is it, if it's divergent, just tell me divergent, right? So, so, you know, give Webstein what it was. It's, it's not a very pleasant mechanism, but just give it what it wants, you know. It's like a parking meter. Is that dumb? So uh, just feed it what it wants. you got to read it. And if it wants it spelled out all capitals, you have to spell it all out, all capitals. It's really, it's really poor. <laughs> um, but so just, you know, I mean, that's one of the things I think we get lazy on reading, especially in math classes. We get a little lazy on, on, on reading the instructions. And so you just got to be just pay attention to it that time. So this is one of the types of improper integrals we could have. And then the other one would be, I, I, I have my area going all the way to infinity, right? So for example, um, uh, let's just say, right? Uh, y equals e to the minus x. Right, so from 1 to infinity. So I'm talking about this area now. And pretty clear, you can see that I'm going to be, right, I'm going to be adding up that area forever. But it's easy if we do limits, right? 
So this is the, the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the minus x dx. And so, so again, in the first case, you can see I have one of my bounds of my integral will give me a vertical asymptote. So I'm going to infinity plus and minus uh, up and down. And then the second integral, I'm going to infinity either left or right or both. Again, it could be both. So this one is going to become the limit as a goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to a of e to the minus x dx. And again, the language that we're talking about is convergent, divergent. Convergent if I get an area, divergent if I can't calculate the area. So those are the only two types of problems that we have here. And if I can't see one of them, right, if I can't see one of them quickly, if I don't see the infinity involved, I want to graph it on my calculator, right? Like when we first started doing derivatives, or uh, better yet, a uh, uh, first derivative test, second derivative test. You could graph it, and it would tell you instantly what you know. You know what you're looking for now, right? And so, same thing here. If you if uh, if I say solve, it, it's the following conversion or diversion that's giving you a huge hint that it's improper, right? That that you're going to have this infinite area, and it still, but it still could be finite, right? Which is pretty interesting, actually. So uh, let's do these two, right? And then we'll, we'll move on to more difficult ones here, right? So let's do the, the two integrals I have set up. Um, and I can't remember. I think the first one's finite. I don't remember about the second one. So let's, let's do that first one, right? The integral up from 0 to 1 of ln of x dx. Okay, how are we doing? Are we okay? You got a, a good idea of what it means to be an improper integral? Yes, Serana says yes. Eleanor has got a, a little sideways, maybe an up and down. Yes. Charlie's fine. Adam's got it. Right, so we're looking for either that infinity this way or the infinity this way, right? Okay, let's do this first one. Uh, so, example. So, the integral from 0 to 1 of ln of x dx. Now, I certainly could do this integral before I do anything else, right? But the, the, I really want to know that it's improper. I'm going to tell you. Solve the following. Find Is the following interval convergent or divergent? Right. And, and so one of the things that we're, we're going to be looking at in our fields is, can this integral be done? OK, if this integral might calculate for me a volume of bacteria uh, in, in, a, in a dish at a certain amount of time. Right. If it can't be solved. Right. Then uh, the integral is not good for me. Right. If, 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 if my problem is unsolvable, why am I bothering it with it? And that's kind of what happens is we, we come up with these mathematical models of things a little bit, you know, very advanced right now in engineering, pretty new in biology, uh, uh, bioengineering, biomath, that type of stuff, uh, pretty new right now. Um, but, if we if we can come up with a mathematical mo model that's solvable, then we can move forward with the experiment. If we come up with a mathematical model that's not solvable, it's 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 either the wrong model or we can't solve this problem, right? This is one of the huge uh, issues with space travel. Uh, you know, I've got all these things moving. I got to get escape the atmosphere. I got to keep people alive. If they couldn't come up with a model how to even land something on the moon and get back then there was no sense in going forward so they had to ha ha at least prove it mathematically that it could happen and then they could go further and still of course then they had more issues 
right? Um, so, but if the math isn't working, you're, you're probably wasting your time. Um, and so that's, that's the, the idea here is we're saying, all right, well, let's find out if this integral is even solvable, right? And it might be the integral that tells you the amount of, uh, of, uh, of the density of the steel you need to build a certain building, right? For engineers, that type of thing. So, so these integrals all have applications in all of our fields. Um, uh, uh, the computer scientists, it, it's a, you know, I guess it could be r compile time or run time or, or that type of thing, but we're, we're more interested in the computer scientist helping us come up with the, showing us the mathematical model and we put in the data and the computer scientist will make the, right, do the program for the mathematical model. So, um, anyway. So I, I, I want to get a good picture of this, right? So Robert says, does it converge, uh, right? Then I know Robert is hinting to me that it's improper. And of course, this area would be negative because it's underground. So I instantly want to write this as a limit. So this is a limit as A goes to zero. That's my, that's the, the one that's questionable. I'm not going to have a problem evaluating Ln at one right? That's not a problem. So I'm doing the integral from a to one of the ln of x dx. So this is by parts. So let's, let's do on your market set go and let's, let's solve this one by parts, right? So, uh, And I get a little lazy with my notation. I just, I know I have to, I don't want to, you'll see what the book does. But this is enough. So let me wait for everyone here. Let me know if you get there. Nice, Charlie and David are there. Angel is there. Nice. Saran is there. Awesome. Adam, great. Charlene, nice. Eruz, nice. Eleanor. So I'm going to evaluate at one. Nice, Nyan. Thank you. I'm going to evaluate at one. I'm going to evaluate at A and decide where I need my limit, right? I'm going to evaluate at one, subtract, evaluate at A, and then move my limit to where I need it, right? So I've got the limit as A goes to zero of one ln of one minus one minus a ln of a plus a. So I evaluated at 1, subtracted, evaluated at a, and I'm going to see where I need uh, my limit at. And it looks like I only need my limit at one point, right? 
because clearly this is going to zero, right? The limit as a goes to zero of a is zero, right? Oh, I made a mistake. I had I should have a one here, right? Sorry about that. And what is the ln of one is zero, right? So it looks like I have minus one minus the limit as a goes to zero of a ln of a. How is how is that for everyone? And you might get a little lazy in the in the notation. Just try and be patient, and you know. Now, what happens to a ln of a as a goes to zero? Well, a goes to zero, right? And but ln of a goes to minus infinity. So we're here, we're here with the L'Hopital's right away, right? This is a zero times infinity. So I want to move one of my pieces downstairs. So what's easier to move downstairs, a or ln of a? A. A. Uh, we, we don't really talk about the the reciprocal of ln a lot, right? So so we're going to move the a down and hope it works. So minus one, minus the limit as a goes to infinity, a uh, zero, sorry, of ln of a over one over a, right? Make sure you agree that a moving move, moving the function a or x downstairs becomes one over one over x, right? And now I can do a little a little hop, right? I can do a little hop here. I can do a derivative of ln of a over the derivative of 1 over a. So we're doing the limit. Make sure I'm okay here. I'm not going too fast. Is everybody following me? I just started drinking coffee, so I don't feel like I'm going too fast. But I know it's different, right? A lot of this stuff, will, you'll never have seen it before in this course. Calc 3 will be very easy for the engineers. Very, very easy. Linear, I think, is, is beautiful. So you, something to look forward to for the computer scientists. So I take a little hop here, and I upstairs I get a 1 over a. Downstairs I get a minus 1 over a squared. Right, we're okay with those derivatives. Remember, it's not a quotient rule. It's derivative of the numerator derivative of the denominator. So I get that negative can come out of my limit. And I'm doing the limit as a goes to zero, and it turns out to be just of a, which of course is zero. So since I got a finite number, the integral converges. A lot of writing. So you'll see my old... Oh, by, by the way, I put up a bunch of old uh, midterms. I think I put up three or four. So you can, you can certainly go see the improper problems on there. I always do like ln of x over x, or x ln of x, or x squared ln of x, or ln of x over x squared, or something like that. Just practice everything, uh, and then hope that Robert is lazy and doesn't change the midterms too much, <laughs> which is usually what happens. Right? I mean, I give all my old midterms, and, and students still fail them, but they're, they're not preparing the right way. Right? I'm trying really to have this class be prepared, right? Really be prepared for this midterm. If you do well in the midterm, you're home free. Uh, if you do poorly on the midterm, by the way, and you do better on your final, I count your final as both your midterm and your final. So you could fail the midterm. You could forget to go to the midterm, get a zero, and then I'll count your final for the whole thing. But the the final's just longer, right? More material. 
but you don't want to take that risk. You want to do well on the midterm so you can have it a little bit easier on yourself for the final, right? How are we doing this? Is it clear process? So, so you're going to show something's convergent or divergent. Take a look at the graph. Decide how to set up your limit, right? Do the integration. Uh, evaluate, uh, apply the limit where it ne is needed, and then possibly use L'Hopital's rule. Not every problem will have L'Hopital's rule on it. I will make sure your problem on your test will have L'Hopital's rule on it. Okay. So let's do that other one, that e to the minus x one, right? We're ready? We're gearing up for chapter six. Chapter six is the beast. Okay. So we got a little break here today. I think the improper, I'm sorry, the partial fractions wasn't too bad. Uh, the improper is not horrible. I guess it's just the, the notation is a pain, right? A lot of writing. Uh, the estimation is, is not too fun. It's, it's really boring, but we'll do that tomorrow. And then we'll start chapter six, right? In chapter six, we do four sections, and then the rest of it is it, your independent study, your project. Um, I was debating whether I give the bio students an extra piece of project, and so that so they can take more points off the exam. That might be. I'm still thinking about that. Not the bioengineers. I need the bioengineers to do all the math. I don't need the biologist to, to worry too much about chapter 8. So it's something I'm debating. I'm, I'm just trying to make things easier, right? If you're a biologist, you're done after Calc 2. Uh, so I don't, I don't, right? It's not that important that you're perfect in Calc 2 as opposed to the engineers pretty much need to be perfect in Calc 2 and the computer scientists. All right, let's do the other uh, problem. I've got the integral of e to the minus x dx uh, from 1 to infinity. I want to know, does it converge or diverge, right? I mean, I can already see what I'm doing to this one on your test. If I'm giving you this one on your test, it's already going to be looking like an x e to the minus x, right? So again, conversion or divergent, but now it's tic-tac-toe, right? You see what I'm saying? And I think that's, if you look at my last semester's exam, it's on there. I don't remember. Maybe it was an x squared e to the minus x. So, so this one is just a simple u sub, right? Uh, but I, I, I already know I need, I need to limit, right? I'm, I'm doing this area, right? I'm trying to find out does it converge or diverge. So I already know I need a limit as a goes to infinity and yes i always use a but you can use some other letter it doesn't matter of the integral from one to a of e to the minus x dx so if i let u be the inside i know du is negative dx the opposite of dx so i'm looking at the opposite of the limit of, as a goes to infinity of the integral of 1 to a of the opposite of e to the negative x dx, right? And so that's now an e to the u problem, right? And, and notice my negative is out here, it's canceling out here, right? I just move it outside the limit. You don't have to, you could leave it inside the limit. Um, 
So this is just an e to the u, right? So this is uh, the opposite of the limit of e to the negative x evaluated at a and 1. Is that okay there? I'm kind of doing that in my head. Hopefully you're, you're doing it in your head as well. Right? Calc 1 integral. So this is the opposite of the limit of uh, e to the a minus e to the 1. Sorry, minus e to the minus 1, right? Sorry, my e to the minus a, right? Yep. And that, that limit is obviously 0. So it converges. Not too bad, right? Anybody with me here? What do you think? Yeah, I think it just needs a lot of practice. Yep, yep. Just practice, yep. Just like shooting baskets or playing an instrument. All right, let's do another one. Let's do one that diverges. And then we got a couple of other little loose ends to pick up here. Um, let's do a nice simple one that diverges. To show the following diverges. Uh, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. Well, it's really quick, right? Because we know this antiderivative right away. Right? So, uh, uh, but I, 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 I can I know this graph as well, so I don't really have to think about it too much, right? We're talking about this this particular area. Um, I want to write this as a limit, so clearly you can see the infinity right in the problem. I don't really need the graph to see that I need this limit is a goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to a of 1 over x dx. I know that integral instantly. It's ln, right? Yes? So the limit is a goes to infinity of the ln of x. I don't need the absolute value because what I'm putting in are positives, right? From 1 to inf infinity are all positive numbers. So I don't need that absolute value. 
Uh, so what do I get? I get the limit as a goes to infinity of ln of a minus the ln of 1. Right? I don't need the limit piece on the ln of 1. And ln of 1 is 0. And then I'm really, I'm doing all of these graphically in my head. I know where ln of x goes as x goes to infinity, right? It goes to infinity. So divergent. Pretty darn simple. It turns out that um, um, it turns out that one one over x to the p. So the integral from one to infinity of one over x to the p dx is convergent if p is bigger than 1. So 1 over x to the 3 halves, 1 over x squared, 1 over x to the 17th, all convergent. Uh, but any power less than 1 or equal to 1, divergent. There's a nice proof in there that I'd like my math majors to do. I'd like you to prove this, prove this. Um, so you'll you'll do that that integral, right, using a power series, and then look at the values of p that work for it, right. So that's Adrian and and Charlie are doing that. It is in the book, so so. You can, you can, if you're stuck, you can take a little peek, but try and prove it. Try and find, the, try and show that that value of P has to be bigger than one for you to get convergent, right? And just, you do the integral as a power series. I'm sorry, as a, as a power rule, right? Undoing the power rule. All right, let's try another one. Let's do another one with uh, L'Hopital's, okay? Um, and, and see how you do with it. So let's do uh, the integral from 1 to infinity of x squared e to the minus x dx. So I'm, I'm going to give you some time. I'm going to try and keep my mouth shut. It's hard for me. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to show this this, uh, this improper integral is either convergent or divergent using a limit and L'Hopital's, right? That's That would be my instruction uh, on the test, right? Uh, show... Uh, Conversion or divergent uh, using a limit and a little hop, right? L'Hopital's rule. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you a couple minutes here. Be right back. He's he's leaving. <laughs> Let's. <laughs>
if you take a look here at my screen, um, I've got this in Desmos. I've got that area in, uh, it looks like a peach. I don't know what color that is. And then I've got the 1 over x function showing there. And I can see the 1 over x function is eventually higher than my function that I'm dealing with here. And I know 1 over x diverges. So this is hinting at this comparison test we're going to start to do. Uh, so it looks like conversion. Anyone get convergent? Anyone there yet? I, I think so. Nice. It looks like it's going that way. Nice. Um, How we do? Nice. Did you see that Lopi Dolls twice, Eleanor? You saw that there? Great. Adam, great. Uh oh, Nima's got the scream. She got the scream. <laughs> 
Neymar, sorry. Uh, Professor, maybe I'm misunderstanding something, yes. but how did we go from when we had a top to the first uh, asterisk? Yeah, uh, uh, tic-tac-toe. No, I know the tic-tac-toe part, that's fine. But the three, line three. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so, so the integral, right, of that came from here, right? And so... Oh, you're asking me. Oh, I forgot. The, okay, tic tac toe. You go to that. Yep, yeah, no, yep, that yep. makes sense. No. Yep, yep. The tricky one here is that it's L'Hopital's twice. Um, right. You you evaluate. You get infinity over infinity. You do your derivatives. You get infinity over infinity again. You do your derivatives. And then you finally get a limit of zero. And so 5 over E. So this, if this problem was on web assign, it would say convergent. If it's convergent, give me the, give me the area. If it's divergent, write in divergent, right? So. I mean, this, this problem's been on my, my test every, every semester this type of right I'll change it to whatever but something just like this this is usually the easiest problem on the test so aside for the one that says name <laughs> anybody need another minute or so Okay, I want to take a break, uh, and then we, we do one last thing today in this section, so, something called a comparison theorem. So let's let's uh, it's nine fifty two. Let's let's come back at ten o five. Okay, so another another nice little bit of a break here. Uh, I'm going to stop my recording.